No, no, no. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so where last we left off, we are set up with our form that will eventually need to have an action and a method tied to it so that we can submit data to the server for creating a new movie. So we need to test our new functionality that works. Okay. Just like David the Hangry Mongoose jumps from spot to spot in search of snack, adding data is a two-part process. Demi? Quick bug. I'm not cool. sure if I'm not cool. typing something Let's right. check it out. Yeah, just trying to push here. Okay. Um, oh, I need to push. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Okay. One Thanks. second. Go ahead and try it now. Cool. All right. All right. So the first request in this two-part request cycle was to get our form to show up on the screen, which we've done. The second part is going to be handling the form submission. Okay. So let's take a look at our chart, which I have open over yonder. And let's look at what we need to do to create data. What are we thinking? Post. Post request to slash movies. Create a new post, which is what? A movie? Create a new movie. Create method. Has a data payload. Where's the data going to be coming in from this? Form. Model. Form. Okay. When it comes in through the form, it's smashed request into. Request body. Direct dot body. Exactly. Okay. So using this information from the chart, we just had our first major chart failure in the other cohort. So I'm going to send you all to go work on a, an activity here in groups for like 50 minutes. And um, it's exciting because some of you are going to do the same thing and you're not going to read the chart properly. And it's going to make me sad, just like it made me sad over there. But it's okay because this is learning and that's what this is all about. So... To be fair, he instant re instantly realized it when I pointed to it on the screen. So be a good time. We need a post request to slash movies. Where are we going to put that? Movies router. Before we get there, what's our UI? It's the form the action. It's the form. The action is slash movies. The method is post. That submits a post request to slash movies with our form data. What happens if I refresh and hit the button? Why is 404. it 404? You don't have a route. Don't have a matching route. Okay. We've added the UI. Let's go to find the route. Okay. We already have a router. The step's going to be a lot less painful. Okay as are the rest of them, because we already have this resource stubbed up. So let's go into our movies router. Let's write around. And oh, by the way, this is a get to slash movies slash new. Now we need a post to slash movies. Okay, and following the chart, we need to use a create controller. I'm going to control click on this. I could just click on seat. Now I have to scroll to see it. I have to, that's just extra work when I could just look at this. and ding. Okay. We have create. We have function create. And Manny has a question. It's um. It's not about the the actual content it's about a shortcut okay 
um, when I do control and then I click on something, it doesn't take me to the page that it is. It just highlights the cursor on the import instead. It depends on what you are command clicking. I'm going to sneeze. Bless you. Oh, thank you. I caught um, that one. Um, it's, yeah, the, the controller. I'm, I'm clicking on movies controller, and instead of sending me to the actual controller page, it's just sending me up to the import. Like this. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does the same for me. Oh. It's just a trick. Like, if you want to go to the create method, uh -huh. if it's technically, if it's being exported, the best way to get there is to go like that. Oh, okay. Cool. I, yeah, it's just because we're defining movies control up on the top of the page, that's what it's trying to send you to. Okay. Create. Good. What do we need to do in here? Redirect. Well, that's the last thing we need to do. <clears throat> yeah. Use your model. Push the form data to the model. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll add that using form data <clears throat> and rec dot body. Okay, and then redirect where? Maybe back to the movies index? <clears throat> I think technically we have it set up to redirect back to the new movie page here. Yeah. We're going to redirect back to the new movies page so we can add, because we don't have a movies index yet, right? So let's just redirect back here. This looks like a lot of code. It is. It's going to be even more when we get done with it. But let's talk through The reason I wanted to not show you that yet is let's talk through what we need to do. <clears throat> We're going to say redirect back to new movie page to add more movies. Okay. When our form data comes through, what do we need to handle? We have, we have some massaging to do here. The request. Right. Let's look at our form again. We have a checkbox. That's something we're going to have to handle. So we're going to have some data massaging to do. Massage the data. Okay. And we know here we have to handle checkbox. What else do we have to handle? I want my cast to be an array of strings. If Is this going to turn them into an array of strings automatically? I mean, that'd be pretty friggin' handy if it did. No, it's one just going to be string. one giant string. So we need to handle separating the <clears throat> big cast string into smaller ones. Okay. Technically, these are both over here. Those are the things that we need to handle. Would you have known that from the start? First time going through this? No, I wouldn't expect you to know that. I'd expect you to fail, which is what you're going to do when you start building these apps. You're not going to write your controller functions flawlessly the first time. That's unrealistic. Okay. Realistically, when you go through this, you submit something with a checkbox and you'd be like, well, isn't my other value not what I want it to be? And you'd have to go through a troubleshooting process and you'd figure it out. Same thing with the strings. But I don't want to focus on the <clears throat> that kind of troubleshooting in this lesson because then you're not getting the content that you need to. So when you go through these lessons, the expectation is not that you're going to be able to do this flawlessly when you go through it on your own. <clears throat> Okay. Because we've done the checkbox in our other app, that's now a low hanging fruit. Okay. I can say rec.body.now showing equals bang bang rec.body.now showing. And what that will do <clears throat> is when rec.body comes through in this form, now showing, rec.body now showing is either going to be on. That string of on, 
or it's not going to exist. All this line does is converse or uh, is coerces that value into either true or false. So rec.body now showing if this is a string of on, I could show you in the browser, right? Bang, bang, string on is true. Bang, bang of nothing. It won't even let me finish that, right? Empty string, but it's not, it's just nothing is false. Charlie? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how type conversion works in uh, JavaScript with casting, but would it be the same thing if you did like capital B Boolean and then had rec.body now showing in parentheses? Potentially, um, like this. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. Cool. You could do that too. Cool. That's handled. Rec.body.now showing is either going to be true or false now, thanks to this line of code. Okay. Is it mandatory that we have a cast right now? Does the user have to enter a cast? No. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the user has entered a cast, then we need to do some work in here. And we need to handle separating the big cast string into smaller ones. If only we had a way to split a string into an array based on the character. We do. Array dot split. Yeah, array dot split. We can say rec dot body dot cast, which right now is just a string, is rec dot body dot cast dot split. And everywhere we have a comma and a space, we're going to chop that out and add whatever's before it to, to an array. So we're going to have an array of strings. I'll prove it. Oh, I love having the browser. So if I have an array that says Harrison Ford, comma space, uh, Jules Verne, uh, I don't know, Ben Affleck, right? That's, that'd be an interesting movie. Dot split. Like that. Uh, did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, it's a, a string. God, wow. That's a rookie mistake. Oh, did that series? Oh, God. I could do this faster this time. Uh, what was the third one I put in there? Affleck. Dot split. Okay, that gives me an array of strings. Okay, if you're ever in doubt and want to test stuff like this, just pop it in your terminal, in your console, in your browser. Just because we're using Node over here doesn't mean we can't use the browser. Does our app see any of this? No. Does it matter? No. It's just testing something. Right, you have a nice little test the ability to test things built into your browser. Take advantage of it. So, if I take a string that's comma separated, I have the names of all of my characters or performers. Okay, so that sets that up to do that. This is my data massaging, it's going to be a little different. Sometimes you won't need to massage your data at all. Sometimes it'll just be set up the way it needs to be before it hits your server. I prefer that. 
use the model to create a movie. Make sure that you've got your import up here, movie from models movie. And then we're going to do exactly that. We're going to say movie.create, and we're going to use our freshly massaged rec.body to create a new movie. Then we're going to pass that to a callback to resolve that promise. And we can redirect. If I want to redirect back to my mo new movies page, how do I do that? Slash movie slash new. Right, because that's just a get request. Then we'll throw Did in some you, error handling. Uh, once you're done with that, could you explain one more time why like why why did we put rec body after movie.create? I'm trying to grasp this. Sure. Our form data comes in and gets attached to the body of the request, right? Correct. Okay. Our form data is key value pairs that we are using to we're changing some of them up here with the massage, right? But the key value pairs that we pass in are used to create a new movie document. So if I pass this movie.create method, create is a method that's available on the mongoose model object, which we've exported here, that has all of the information about what a movie needs to look like. Because we took our movie shape and the schema and exported it as a model. This method or this model has in it a method called create. And if I pass it key value pairs saying title is Star Wars, cast is this array of strings, what it'll do is it'll create that in the database. Okay, I think that makes sense. You're basically just, you're creating an object to attach to the body and that's the syntax we use for that. Not technically, we're not creating oh. it to attach to the body here. It already is in the body of the request. It's coming in, that request, like when it hits our server, that request with the form data hits our server, is funneled down, and this line of code says, oh, you sent me form data, cool. I'm gonna put that form data on rec.body. So when this line of code runs in our middleware, it takes our form data and adds it to rec.body. It's now in rec.body. Hits our router, hits our controller, I should be able to click that. I don't know why that's not working. And when it hits this file, rec.body has all of our form data in it because of that middleware. Mm -hmm. We make some adjustments to it so that it lines up with the shape of what we have in our database. And then rec.body is being used to create a new movie. We need data to, like if I want to create a new document, I need data to do that. So this movie.create method is saying, go make me a new movie. And what I should pass into this is an object with key value pairs that match up to what's in my database. That's what it's expecting, right? Rec.body here is the same as title, Titanic, cast, um, Oh my God, what are their names? Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet. <laughs> Leo and Kate, right? So cast is technically an array. And then uh, release gear is what, 2000? Somewhere around there? Oof, sure. No, it's way before I think that. It was before that, yeah. Like 97? Hey Siri, yeah. what year did Titanic come out? Titanic was released on December 19th, 1997. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I saw that movie too many times in the theater with my girlfriend at the time. It's crazy. I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I feel old. That's oh, man. <laughs> I double Jesus. that. Oh, my God. I was... One of the first movies I saw in theater. <laughs> I was 15. I'm um, so okay. yeah, back this is what this object looks like. Okay, this is, it has these, if I wanted to create that movie, that would happen. That would create this movie. But having to type this in manually every time doesn't work. 
I want to use the form data, which is coming in as rec.body. Did you say so rec.body is a uh, a reference to the model structure? Or would that be incorrect? Rec.body should match the model structure, but that's not because of anything special. That's because of work that we've already done. It's a key, it's just key value pairs. Rec.body is just key value pairs from what we submitted in our form. So our view has the fields, right? The options or the uh, inputs. So when I type Titanic in here, what happens is when I hit this button, it takes the input here and says, oh, title. Title is Titanic. That's a key value pair that's added to rec.body. So rec.body.title is Titanic. Whatever the release year was. Rec.body.release year is 1997 when I submit this form. Does that make sense? Just showing this view made this make so much more sense. <laughs> like, because it's pulling the body of this document here. Okay, I, yes. I, I get it at this point. I That totally makes sense. Thank you. Cool. For, yeah. Give me that extra explanation. Anytime. Whenever you come across something like that, just let me know. And I'll just say things over and over and keep walking through it until you until you you smell what I'm stepping at. It's going to take a hot minute. That's okay. Cool. So let's go back to our controller. Let's add some error handling in real quick. If there's an error, we're going to console log it. This is going to be very important later when we add validation in here. And if there's an error, I want to do the same thing here. I want to redirect back to movies new. Okay, that's not really going to do us much good in this situation because we're going back to movies new either way. But back when we get this finished, if there's an error and we see that we've gone, like ultimately when we create a movie, we want to go to an index view where we get to see all the movies we have list listed. But we don't have that yet, so I'm redirecting here. If we have an error, what we could do is we can redirect back to the movie's new page and the user is going to be like, wait, I thought I just entered a movie. There must have been a mistake. I must have done something wrong. Okay. Best practice would be to tell the user they did something wrong. And technically, what you can do with that is you can, there are ways to pass that error along, but there's more going on there than meets the eye. It's a little bit harder to do that. We're not going to worry about that quite yet. This looks good. Let's see if it works. I'm going to go with Titanic. I feel like that's PG. Oh, that's it steamy was. scene. It's got to be PG or PG-13, one of the two. It's PG because I think that was a lot of kids' first time seeing what 13. <laughs> Is it Is 13? It really? I just looked it up, PG-13. Cool. All right. A lot of parents went to that, took their kids to that movie. Two T's or one? Just one. Weird name. He's an avatar as well. <laughs> Not now, sure. Cool. So I hit add. Did that work? Yeah. Uh Yeah, exactly. Things to look at before we do that. Did I get any error messages? No. So that, that's a good sign. If there were an error, then I would have seen it. So let's go look. We go to our movies. I'm going to hit refresh. You can also use the little curly do up there. And I should see that I have a movie document. Yay! Title? Release year, rating, cast, which is an array, now showing. Oh, look, our timestamps are working. Happiness all around. Harrison. No happiness here. I oh, there's always happiness. There's, oh, at 404? Cool. Yeah. Let's share your screen. Let's check out your routers. Boop. 
Ooh, you know what I see? This is fun. Anybody remember what this means? Perfect. They're trying to respond twice. Yeah. Let's go back to your controller. Props for remembering that. It happened to be in my lab. That's why I remember. Oh, that's the, yeah. When I got greedy and did that first. You got greedy. Got greedy. The question is, did that create it in the database? Well, now you're going to have two. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you will. You should. So right click. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hit refresh and then go to movies. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Can I share Love my screen? It. I think I have a different issue going on. Please. Thank you. Kudos for remembering that, Chris. That's uh. What, what was it called? Fun. Chris, Chris, what would you say it was though? You re responded twice to the request. I'm also getting a 404 though. <laughs> cool. Well, we'll knock them all out. This is fun. Okay. So, so I don't believe that the data was created. I mean, I see movies here, but there's nothing. Well, it, it's it. not. And I'm going to show you why. Okay. Right here indicates to me that you have a form that is sending this, you see this question mark title equals, this looks like it's appending the data as a query string to your form. So this means that if I had to guess, since it's also a get a slash movies, that if we look at your form, your action and your method on your form and your new EJS are both gonna be blank. Ah, uh, it's just a method. Turn that method into a post. Shot. Hit back, hit back, and then refresh. Okay, cool. Titanic. Don't forget to refresh, y'all, because it's your when you hit the back button, it's still remembering all the HTML you gotta. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Now we have a post four hundred four. Did I get the wrong here. redirect? Uh, it looks like your post request isn't set up right. So let's take a look at your routers. Okay. Router.post. I'm so glad somebody yeah. finally did this. Did I not? Ex no, I exported. Movies control. Yeah, I have no idea what I did now. Movies new looks like this. So movies looks like movies new looks like this. Oh, is it supposed to be not? Why? Wait. Because that's right. It's already it's going about... to local yeah. host slash movies because that's how we get into the router. Yeah. Okey doke. Oh, I can see the so... cogs ticking in your brain. It's so good. Cool. I like it. Let's see if we get another error. I hope so. <laughs> hey, now let's go check Azure. Did I set this up right? Does it look correct? Because I feel like other people have blue, blue global, more blue global things than I do. I know my to-do skills I need to fix, but did I do the, the blue wrong? global things are, um, you're, you're fine for right now. I don't know what is, you got some, silliness happening but i'm not worried about it cool i won't stress about it right now cool we made the data nice work sweet cool chris you didn't already fix it did you okay i thought i did but now oh, i God. don't know if i did actually <laughs> let's see so i also had the same issue with my routes you had a 500 which is fun that's when i was like playing around trying to fix it and so okay. i also had slash movies here okay change that and then i submitted refresh. it make sure you refresh your page first and let's see what happens okay so i was going to subtract 
great movie. My favorite. I have my original VHS copies of both Sister Acts. Oh, I like this. Street I like where this is you. going. I love where this is going. Really? Oh, never mind. I thought you were just going to enter a single. No. Because that would have thrown the air. Okay. What you got? So it went. Cool. Check Thing your is, data. That's where I'm not seeing anything in the data. Refresh. Oh, now I probably have two sister acts. If you only put one cast in there, like I think you were about to talk about this, is it breaking because we're trying to split it and there's it doesn't have the criteria to split? Mm -hmm. Okay. Catherine? Now we'll be fixing it. Uh, we don't because we're not going to deal with it. We're going to fix it by refactoring it later so we don't have that issue. What you got? Yeah, I got the first piece of data to save Titanic, but now mm -hmm. when I'm adding movies, they're not saving. Let's check it out. Great. I also opened this weird object. Oh, yeah, you can close that. So that looks like a deleted JSON document. So just click on don't save. Okay. Um, okay. So if I go to add a movie, the only one I have in there is Titanic. So I'm going to save Shrek. Oh. And then when I go here, mm -hmm. I'll open this up. Right click on it on movies and go to refresh. Whoa, <laughs> you do that. Do you have to do that every time? Every time you add data, yeah. When you connect it, it's going to show up with whatever you have at that point. If you refresh any data, you have to hit that refresh button. Whoa, thanks. Nice work. My input boxes aren't getting formatted. Is that something that's worth fixing? Show me. They're just like all pushed. They're all at the bottom of the screen. Interesting. Do command shift R or control shift R. What's what operating system are you on? Yeah, Mac command shift R. Okay, let's take a look at your uh, um, your code. To be in. I all I can see is your browser. Oh, my fault. My fault. You're good. I was, I was sharing the. I forgot I was sharing the window only. You're going to need to zoom, like, way the hell in. <laughs> cool. All right. I can make that work. Um, that is what is going on. And your link for your style sheet, mm -hmm. um, you should have just the slash style sheets. You don't need slash, dot, dot, slash public. Delete the dot dot. There you go. And refresh. And you may need to restart your server. Okay. No, it should be like that. It should be. Well, I moved slash... my public into my. Oh, no. Why it wasn't know? showing. It wasn't showing up. It was not, it was, I was getting like a, like it wasn't allowing me to find the style sheets period. And 
unless I yeah, have it. In you're going to want to move that back. Okay. So move the public directory back to the root of your project. Okay. And then I'm guessing you probably have bad links in your other places too. So let's go to your, yeah, that one's set up properly. Can you open that public directory for me real quick? It looks like your style sheets needs to go inside of public. Oh, it looks like you moved style sheets, but not public. Uh, restart your server. Typically, you have to do that when you change any of that stuff, but that should put you in a better place. No, no, it, it, it formatted them like more closely to how they should be. Yeah. I think there might be one other thing that's off, but I wouldn't worry a ton about it. We can we can take a look at that later. So the reason that we do that that way, um, and I will share my screen here and show you, is when we put something in that public directory, it is accessible anywhere within our entire app because of this line of code. So this line of code in our middleware essentially serves up those static files as routes. So what it does is this line of code will actually find every single thing that you've got in that public directory and build a route for it. So if you put an href in there for a style sheet, that href to the style sheet is actually a get request to slash style sheets slash style sheets slash main.css. So if they're not in that public directory, that ability to do that is not going to work. And I know what you're thinking is, well, why can't I just hard code all the links to my stuff? And that what's well, not going to work for deployment. You'll end up with problems when you try to deploy something like that because of the way that static assets are served up in deployment. So you're going to want to leave that that way. Cool. Cool. See how much happier it is when David's not hangry? Such a good little mongoose. We've already done this. This is just how to connect Azure. Cool. Okay, look at that one. Remember to take breaks when you're coding. Otherwise, you might end up dancing around eggs like David, the hangry mongoose. Seems like a happy mongoose. <laughs> I mean, that tail says agitated. Well, I guess you're right. Stiff tail means bad. Yeah. Okay. We talked about this already a little bit. Mongoose, the querying ability is very capable. We actually got to see an example of this earlier this morning when we sorted something um, where we sorted by negative created that date or timestamp or negative ID technically. And IDs are sequential. So if you sort something by its MongoDB object ID, you'll actually sort them in sequential order from when they were created. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to find all of our movies. We're going to have an index view so that we can see all the movies we just created. Okay. And we've already talked about this. this we talked about this when we talked about to-dos. Okay. There are three different methods that are common for finding something in the database. Find. That will return everything that matches our query object, which in this case is empty and blank, which means find me all of the things. That's important. You're going to use that in a second. When we do something like a show view, we would have find by ID. Find by ID will accept an object ID and return a single document based on that ID. Find one will, mind, will find the first document that matches the query. So if I pass find one, the first movie with a release year of 2000 will be returned in this search. Okay. 
An empty query object, like so, selects all documents. You'll use this frequently to implement index functionality. Okay. Reading data. I'm going to give you 45 minutes to do this. Uh, we're going to call it 55 because I'm going to give you a break too. M please make sure you actually take that break. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. Uh, Tom, could you start building breakout rooms for me real quick? Uh, do, if what, 13? So do three, 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 and four. That's fast math. Um, yeah, that adds up to 13. Cool. What I want you to do is I want you to implement index functionality. You need to identify the route, add the UI. Okay. Uh, you're going to have a UI by adding an all movies link next to the new movie link that already exists in your nav bar. Define the route, stub up and export the controller's index action, code the index action to use the movie model to query for all movies. As mentioned above, use the empty query object to retrieve all the documents. Render a views movies index EJS, providing to it the movies that you just retrieved, as well as a title. If you don't pass the title, it's not going to work. Then create the index EJS to display all of the movies in a table. Okay, this is your EJS. Okay, you're going to have some things in here that you have to fix. This code, as written, will not work. Okay, here you're going to need an, a for each. You're going to have to open up a for each here. You're going to have to close it here. So open your for each here, close it here. Here you have a. This is the reason the code won't work if you throw this in your terminal or you throw this in your browser and do it among other things. But when you iterate over the movie and your for each, please make sure you call it movie. Otherwise, none of this is going to work. Okay, it should be movies.foreach movie arrow function. And then each of these movies will be here. You need to finish writing this ternary statement or else your code will also not run. Okay, so you have movie.now showing question mark. You need to put the rest of the ternary statement in there. Okay. We're just going to call it an hour. So at 50 after the hour, we'll pull you back in here unless everybody finishes early. So what I want you to do is in the classroom channel, when you get done doing that, when you're done with the index exercise, click on the Ricky Ticky Tabby Mongoose. Does anybody have any questions before you are whisked away? Have fun with this. I'm not going to tell you if you have a problem until the end. I want you to struggle through this a little bit. Okay. Use your team. We're going to hop into the breakout rooms and check on you after a little bit, after like 10, 15 minutes. Please have somebody sharing the screen and talking through the problem. Don't just all work on your own and not talk to each other. That would make me a sad panda. Okay. Have fun.